Hey, superstars, it's Danny with what would have ordinarily been a, a spot the propaganda, but is more so a planetary service announcement. And I'll explain why. Today, we are examining a very short clip from Naomi Wolf's recent interview on the Tim Pool show. Tim had Naomi on to talk about the Mar-a-Lago FBI raid. And for the most part, Naomi was, as she usually is, brilliant and poignant and really spot on as well as fierce with her courage and her willingness to stand for justice and the ideals upon which a republic was based. That being said, Naomi has admitted that she is a reformed lefty. And I want to be clear that I take no, no sides when it comes to the left-right perceived divide. I'm merely paraphrasing Naomi Wolf, who has had a very public affiliation uh, as a liberal lefty and is now in the process of relinquishing that allegiance given the corruption that continues to emerge out of the left and out of the Democratic Party. Again, just to be clear, I'm not a Republican and I'm not a Democrat. I don't play the polarity game. So the reason why this is a planetary service announcement and not a spot the propaganda is because I don't actually think that Naomi is consciously trying to run propaganda or to support an op or a narrative. I think she is still in the process of deprogramming herself and unraveling a lot of the mind control that comes along with really any political allegiance. And so I'm giving Naomi the benefit of the doubt and trusting that as part of her evolutionary journey, this is just a piece to which she hasn't really clued in. So uh, without further delay, let's jump into this clip and break down the programming. What I would say for the record though, is as a survivor of sexual assault, the way he spoke about women was catastrophic and I could not. Okay, that's all we need to hear for, the, for this first, <laughs> this first of our three breakdown installments. So notice how Naomi prefaced her critique. She's talking about President Trump. So she prefaced her critique with as a survivor of sexual assault. Now, before I get into this, I wanna be clear, I'm not minimizing the trauma that sexual assault victims incur. I'm in no way, shape or form thinking or, or indicating that sexual assault is cool. What I'm talking about is the pattern and the formula. So the formula generally starts off exactly like this with whomever it is that's running the, the programming, that's running the script, prefacing the criticism they're about to give about a public figure, or it doesn't even have to be a public figure, but someone whose speech they're about to criticize and someone who they're about to cancel or show an intolerance for. This will be prefaced by a moment of self-referencing their own victimhood. So it looks like as a victim of sexual assault, as a woman of color, as a gay woman, as a one-armed trans person, as a person who identifies as a zebra, X, Y, Z, right? The through line is that we will cease to talk about the larger issue or the larger policy, or, or even to what the person is doing, but we will have to frame it and set up that framing in terms of ourselves and specifically our trauma. And it's from that trauma-informed, unintegrated victimhood lens that then the person who is speaking will more often than not lobby to cancel someone, to criticize them, to police their speech, to police their thoughts, right? So this is something to pay attention to is the, the, the beginning caveat, the, the launching caveat of as a, and then fill in the, the victimhood identifier. The key is, is that that will be used as a, a means of justifying why someone should not be allowed to speak freely, why someone should not be allowed to have these thoughts, these beliefs, et cetera. It's used as a means of rationalizing 
the imposition of wrong use of, of will upon other people because it might hurt our feelings because we're claiming victimhood around trauma that we have yet to heal and integrate. And I'll speak a little bit more after our three-part breakdown, but, but that's formulaic signifier number one is the invocation of our personal trauma as the caveat for the criticism we're about to give. Okay, let's move on myself to vote for someone who was so dismissive about sexual abuse. It's that simple. Maybe that was short-sighted of me, but I kind of shouldn't have to. He should have had, had advisors saying, look, just talk, you know, apologize, you know, talk about it compassionately, say you've learned whatever, say you will try harder in the future to not be, you know, horribly abusive or describe women in horribly abusive ways. Or just All right. So here we have the second, <laughs> the second signature of this particular op of this particular script, which is the instructions to the person that we're canceling or criticizing is then given the following directives, apologize, say you're sorry, and say that you've learned. This is pretty standard issue. I literally cannot tell you guys how many times people have thrust this at me. Well, just say you're sorry and tell us that you've learned. And it's like, well, I never gave any indication that I am sorry. And I don't know what it is you want me to say that I've learned because I'm not, I'm not in your indoctrination camp. Like I'm not following that curriculum. But the other key about this directive, which again, you'll, you'll see across the board is that it's all about optics, right? It doesn't ever move to inquiring as to whether the person being publicly shamed is actually sorry needs to be sorry, maybe was misunderstood, or in this case, taken out of context, and therefore isn't going to apologize for the way that the press took his words out of context. And, and I'm taking a leap here. So let me bring it back to my lane. You know, like when I've been misunderstood and told that I need to apologize, no one's, I'm like, but I never said I was sorry. So why, <laughs> like you're putting the cart before the horse. I'm not having that emotion. So why would I then engage the behavior that's indicative of that, of that emotion? But the whole part of this op, which is all based on the optics of like a Cherry Mary Sunshine, Stepford, like homogenized, sterilized robot society is it doesn't matter what we really feel because it's not about people being truly virtuous or truly tolerant or truly good. It's only ever about the optics and the performance and the theatrics. So that goes hand in hand with not just apologizing, but also saying that we've learned. And it's so interesting that that's always a part of it. And just say that you've learned. But what if no one's learned? Anyway, this is woke cultural Marxist signature script bullet point number two, which is the prescribed apology along with the prescribed admission of having learned something okay let's move on to the next describe sexual this, assault this, this is when he said this is when he was like when you're famous they let you you know yeah but even his apology apology afterwards was very very dismissive and i think that was a very painful moment for you know the 33 percent of women who've been sexually abused before they were 18 and the 17 percent of men um and and it was so hard for me Okay, so this is op script signature number three, the invocation and the citation of statistics of victimhood. These are all inextricably bound. And to be clear, when we're running this op, not all three are always going to be included in the same sort of formulaic, hypnotic, mind-controlled recitation of the script. But notice when you see any one of these or any combination of them, you can clue into the fact that you are speaking to someone who is running this program. And when you know that they're running this program, I really recommend remove yourself from the conversation or, or change the subject because you're not gonna reason with someone's mind control. It's, it's definitely not going to happen. But here's, here's the issue with the citation of the statistics. The victimization pathology is also inextricably bound to this particular 
opt to this particular programming. And you will notice how people who are running this program will defer to all of these statistics of victimhood. And you know, I'm not even going to deny the statistics. And in the same way that I'm not denying that sexual assault sucks and no one, no one on this planet deserves to be sexually assaulted, should be sexually assaulted. As, as you know, you've heard me say a million times, I'm all about right use of will. So when we're sexually assaulting someone, we're imposing our will. It's, it's not okay. But we will see this recitation of these statistics as a means of like hyping up the victimization factor. And again, no disrespect to Naomi Wolf. Naomi, I think you're amazing. I have invited you on my podcast and I still welcome you on my podcast. I would love to discuss this with you. We are all under mind control. We are all programmed. We are all part of this culture of indoctrination and propaganda. And it takes extreme self-awareness and concerted conscious effort to deprogram ourselves and to remove ourselves from these programs. So I'm just sharing this so that all of us can be aware of some of these signatures and not take the bait. So the other piece that I would like to throw in here is that this imposed sanitization and homogenization, which by the way, is being pushed by the people who from my experience are being the most hateful, the most mean, the least tolerant, the most prone to bullying, the most divisive. But this elevation of the optics of virtue over actual virtue is crazy. And, and I think that we really need to check ourselves as a culture that now people are no longer allowed to be ignorant, to be sloppy in their speech, to be misogynistic. I'm a woman and I'm not going to outlaw misogyny. I don't want it legislated. Like, I don't want anyone who's in a position of perceived authority imposing that over me in such a way that perves my life. But someone saying something stupid, like they're allowed to say something stupid. They're allowed to think stupid things. They're allowed to have stupid beliefs. It's called free will. And we're all evolving at our own pace. So this, you know, this bizarro mission to rid the world of any sort of racism by way of bigotry and racism and segregation is beyond cuckoo bananas. Like, I don't even, it's ridiculous to give it any sort of real weight because it's so absurd and it's being done in such a like silly, badly performed manner. But honestly, like, I really am not going to get my panties in a bunch because some old dude says something dumb about women, whether it's taken out of context or when it, whether it is in context, I don't care. And if that throws me off to the point that I lose my emotional center, then that is a clue that I have healing to do. Because the only way to really be sovereign and to really be empowered is for us to be in control of our emotional state. People are going to say stupid shit. So let's say I was attacked by a dog and I haven't healed that trauma. Should no one be allowed to have a dog? Should no one be allowed to wear a dog shirt? a dog hat? Should no one be allowed to talk about dogs? No, that's ridiculous. I have issues with dogs. That's on me to deal with. So if someone has sexual trauma, you're living in a world where there is misogyny. There's probably always going to be misogyny. Instead of trying to make misogyny illegal, it's, it's an Occam's razor. Like it's just so much smarter and easier to heal our own trauma and to trust that people will find their own way out of misogyny, bigotry, hatred in their own time at their own pace as is, is authentic for them instead of trying to force it on people and shaming them for saying stupid shit. We all say stupid shit. So this concludes my three-part analysis of the, the programming and the script that goes along with this particular flavor of woke cultural Marxism. Thanks for paying attention. Thanks for remembering that every word matters that you are omniscopic amazingness have a rocking day Mwah.